Hey, how y'all doing? This is Steve Dash. I was the guy who was chasing in Friday the 13th, part two, with the bag over the head. Not like the regular guys. And you're listening to the Tim O and Harley Show. Welcome to the Tim O and Harley Show. Thank you for listening to the Tim O and Harley Show. I am Tim O. Over there is my partner in mind crime, Mr. Ben Harley. Say hello, Harley. What is happening, people? Ben, I was a teenage Harley. <laughs> I had a different one. I had a different one. I was like, that doesn't really work, but I like it. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> How's everything uh, going, Mr. Ben Harley? Harley? Yeah. <laughs> oh, not too bad, buddy. Not too bad. How about uh, yourself? Uh, not, not too bad. I want to talk a couple of things. Uh, let's see. First up, I want to remind everybody that November 29th at the pageant here in St. Louis, Missouri, uh, we will be playing Fragile Pour Some Mice is the we. Yeah. We'll be playing with The Urge and 6%. Well, I think we'll be opening the show at the pageant. That'll be a big Black Friday show. Uh, nice. My punk rock outfit, Ultraman. Ultraman. Uh, I yes. believe, I didn't write this down, but I believe it's October 21st at the Duck Room. Mr. Ben Harley, do you know why this place is called the Duck Room? <laughs> um, uh, no. <laughs> it's the yeah, basement of Blueberry somewhere. Hill. Oh, is it? Okay. Okay, so the, the so, duck walk. Yes. The duck walk. Yes. Right. This is duck a place Barry. that Chuck Berry played at all the time. Yes. We're playing at uh, the duck room. Okay. I've played there quite wow. a few times in the in the Have you? it's a little bit of a smaller place, so anyway, it's 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 been yeah. a while. But Ultraman would be playing at the Duck Room October twenty first with Mike Watt. Of uh, Minutemen fame, and uh, he's no, played with a lot nice. of a lot of. He's like a punk rock legend, bass player yeah. of all people. Yeah. So, but uh, that should be a fun and interesting show we're doing too, Mr. Ben Hart. Oh, cool. Also, like to report that there's been a lot of heat in the country re- about this Impossible Burger. It's Impossible, uh. right? The, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Impossible Burger. Now, I did have a little little taste of a Whopper. Okay. Of an impossible whopper. Angio uh, is trying to go more vegetarian thanks to her uh, cancer and stuff. Sure. She's battling and everything. Yeah. So um, I try a little piece. I'm like, well, that kind of tastes like a whopper. Cool. So, Ben Harley, I thought I would be a responsible adult, a parent, <laughs> husband, caring yeah. about my my ill wife and everything. And I thought, <laughs> I'm going, I saw impossible patties oh. at the grocery store. So I'm thinking, I know how to whip me up some steak or burgers or something. Yeah. I got the seasonings. You've had them before. You know. Yes. Very so, good. so uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> I took one bite of that son of a bitch and looked at her like, I'm never eating anything that be- that begins with the letter I again. <laughs> Not only the Impossible Burger, it. Yeah. I have a very sensitive palate and nose. Okay. Uh-huh. Very sensitive palate and nose. I might be the wine drinker in me or whatever. Whatever I taste in that Impossible Burger Listen, whew, reminds good. me of some bad things. That's all I can tell you. And this is a family show, Mr. Penarl. That's all I'm going to say. But it's like, ugh, not good. Not good at all. No, so I, I'm, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know, buddy. Yeah, I, I, it might be impossible to get me to try that. So. Well, now, the Whopper was pretty decent. Like, But I, again, I only yeah. tasted, she just gave me like a little like crumble of the beef, you know, to try. And I was like, yeah. and I had already just eaten one, a real one. Sure. So you okay. would think I'd really yeah. be able to know. So I was like, wow, that, that really does taste the same. <laughs> I don't know if I'm ever going to try another one at Burger King again, though, too. I, <coughs> yeah. And look, here's the thing. It's, it's we great. We have to revolt, Tim. <laughs> we have to revolt. They're going to be, I'm telling you, Silent Green on the night. I know, coming I know. Up. Well, that's the thing. It's like they are, yes, they are plant-based. Yes. Does yeah. not mean they're healthy for you. <laughs> no, right, no, so no, no. Vegans can be fat too. All right, <laughs> it's gonna be sawdust. Uh, I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah. Well, sawdust and then soylent green. Absolutely. All right, let's move on to a couple things I watched for yeah. quick, quick here, Mr. Ben Harley, before I get to our yeah, official little film. A uh, couple of mystery science theaters I just want to let you know I watched because yeah. we did. We happened to watch two of them, and I think you really enjoy this week. I mean, you okay. really in, in particular enjoy. Now, you know okay. that we started going through all of the mystery science theaters I have alphabetically, correct? So we yeah, are starting, yeah. we, we talked about this. We're starting with mystery science theater, then we will go to film crew and then riff tracks, and we're going to go through all of them. 
Okay, okay. so this right, is good. this is our deal. This is what we've been doing. So we're at the the K and the L. Okay. okay, like right around the K and the L. All right. So there's two movies, Mr. Ben Harley. One starts with K, one starts with L. Then I know yeah. you really enjoy in the Mystery Science Theater universe. So first up, <laughs> okay. The Killer Shrews. No, <laughs> yes, yeah. Oh, I love you, so Killer Shrews. Okay, so we got that one. I'm not Festus. reviewing or nothing. Oh, Festus. <laughs> yeah. I think you directed that too, did he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. so the next one up, the next one up might be a little surprise coming out left field for you, but Laser yeah. Blast. Oh, I just watched Laser Blast did the other you? day. <laughs> yeah, it did. You know, that's a weird one, Timo. Yeah, you know, that was one. I, well, I know we've talked about this, but yeah, I had snuck in to see. Right, when I was yeah. a kid, uh -huh. yeah, and the in the in the creepy um, <laughs> yeah, theater. Ooh. Well, the theater wasn't creepy, but where this exact, you know, that's where they showed all the grindhouse right, and right, ones right, like that. Right. Yeah, and you had they always had a guy standing there, and you could if he wasn't there, you could sneak in. But right, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was. Uh, uh, that guy tries to be Mark Hamill's stunt double. Isn't it? And, <laughs> yeah, he's trying. He also yeah. looks like the main. Uh, the main uh, bad guy in the original uh, Assault on Precinct 13, the blonde guy. Oh, yeah. I, I yeah, thought it was the yeah. same dude. It was not, but I, I yeah. thought it was. Uh, so but here's the thing. So in there, there is a riff, a Michael Landon riff. Oh, okay. Now, they're All watching right. us and they're listening, Mr. Ben Harley. I know this. Yes, Whoever they are. They are. Yeah. Now, they didn't yeah. have anything to do with me pulling out that disc. Uh-uh, no. Okay, but it is a coincidence, <laughs> but here's something that's very, very strange, okay? Another yeah. film I watched, I believe this is from 74 or 72. I wasn't even going to mention it, but for this. Oh, okay. There's a movie called Necromancy, okay? It's yeah. a Bird Eye Gordon movie from Food of the God yeah. fame and all those, all those great <laughs> turkey movies. Um, <laughs> yeah. Turkey li li literally and figuratively. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm watching this movie Necromancy, and it has Orson Welles in it. I'm oh, like, really? wow, man, Orson Welles, you know, in the 70s, he needed money for liquor. That's all there was to it. So that's <laughs> fine. So what happens later? So when, when ne Necromancy is done, I turn on my antenna TV, my new jam, yeah. right? It's my new jam, antenna TV. Yeah, it is. So I'm watching Barney Miller, minding my own business, and then Johnny Carson comes on. Yeah, guess who's a guest on Carson? Orson Welles. Orson Welles. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I don't understand Sorry. what's happening in this world, Mr. Ben Harley. Yeah. But it's a small yeah. one. It's a small world. I yeah. going to tell you. And I don't want to go to that ride again. I'm not going no. to the small world ride again because that'll, <laughs> that'll make me even more on an acid trip than experiencing these things daily. So they are listening. Yeah. They're listening. They have yeah, to be. Listening. Yeah. There was something that came up the other day. What was it that, that we've reviewed? Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, actually, this morning, Timo, uh, before we started the show, I watched a little bit of The Boy in the Plastic Bubble. Oh, boy. Uh, Riff Tracks. Riff Tracks, so. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> something else, something else. So uh, well, let me move on here, Mr. Ben Harley, get to a few things. Uh, yeah. Let's see here. From 1988, I watched Ooh, the oh, I watched the Lucio Fulci movie, okay. Zombie 3. Zombie 3, huh? Okay. Yeah, Zombie 3. So... Okay, so the movie Zombie, zombie I have to explain <laughs> yeah. this, and, I, and you might remember this, but some of our audience might not. So the movie Zombie in Italy was called Zombie 2 because Dawn yeah. of the Dead in Europe was called Zombie. Okay. So Dawn of the Dead right. comes out, Zombie is a huge hit. Now, we know it as Dawn of the Dead. In Europe, they call it Zombie. It's a huge hit. Well, what do the spaghetti sauces do? over there they like to make a buck off something that's already made a buck right that's what they're good at so okay cool last shark right so they make they make zombie 2 which i don't believe was even supposed to be called zombie 2 i think it might have been another movie called zombie it's very it's a gray area it's a gray area okay but yeah. i like oh, yeah. zombie zombie is a fun movie i think it's one of the pinnacle of italian horror films but it's called zombie okay. 2 so in america there is no zombie 2 there's right to zombie 3 <laughs> okay are you confused wow yeah, yeah. very nice. okay all right so yeah. lucio yeah, Marvel fulci universe or something? Yeah. Yeah. lucio fulci goes down to where else but the philippines okay to uh direct the future director very good director actually duran serafian or Ser serafian sorry okay. uh in this movie well the problem is that lucio fulci got uh they got they got uh, he got sick while they were making the movie, but he he was not in good health. He was, I think, he had cancer okay. actually. And the 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 heat in the Philippines and the social unrest at the time 
uh, was, <laughs> was not awful. very good for, I think he had liver cancer or something. was not oh, very good God. for it. So the two maestros, Bruno Mattai and Claudio Fragazzi. Now these are all these are two clowns that are doing some of the even the lesser Italian movies, okay? Like we're okay. talking like I think Bruno Mattai did rats. If you remember right. rats, okay. where the rats were going yeah. on the conveyor belt and stuff. So they came in to finish the film for Fulci. Okay. The problem is that Fulci got mad because he didn't have the resources he needed to make the movie in the first place. So he shot like an hour of the characters rowing down a, a river oh in a God. canoe. It's <laughs> so a lot of the movie. A lot of the movies rowing in a canoe and stuff. So these two clowns came in to save the movie. So basically what happened is you have three different movies hodgepodge together yeah. called Zombie 3 with Filipino Kung Fu Zombies. Oh really? Yeah, Kung Fu Zombies. Kung huh? Fu <laughs> Zombies. Yes. Yeah, so How does that work out? How's that work? I don't I, know, I, and I know it's I, Italian going right, right, right. Exactly. I don't, don't don't think the Philippines is the Kung Fu mecca of the world, but yeah, apparently yeah. when they they become undead, it, it is the uh, the Kung Fu uh, mecca of the world. You know, they're fast fighting zombies and stuff. So not a great movie, but a hell of an interesting watch. Uh, Severin put it out. It's one of the many, 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 many films. As, as George Gaines would say in Police Academy, one of the many, 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 many films that I bought at Horrorround. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, but anyway, so that was uh, Zombie 3. From 1992, Mr. Ben Harley watched a movie called Live Wire. Okay. Hmm. This is an action film starring Pierce Brosnan, uh, Ben Cross, Ron Silver. It's an interesting movie. I'll, it's it's sort of a little bit of a lower budget kind of a ripoff of Speed. A little okay. bit, but it's a good movie all on its own. It's a little bit more of a mystery and everything. So there's a mad, there's a mad uh, like arsonist, okay? Well, okay. But 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 what he's doing is he's putting something in water. So when people drink the water, they explode. Oh, wow. <laughs> fun stuff. All right, so it's kind yeah. of a fun little movie. All right, but here's the deal: there is an actor in it that I thought I should bring up to you. Okay. Um, his name is now he is in this movie. This is legit. I'm not making this up. His name is Clement von Frankenstein with a C and a K, not just a K Clement von Frankenstein. And I was thinking, wow, that's a hell of a name. So I looked up yeah. Clement von Frankenstein and he indeed is the son of Clement von Frankenstein senior. This oh. is a, yeah. So this is his real name, but the funny thing is, it's a good thing that Clement shortened his name. <laughs> What's his referral? Uh -oh. So his entire name is Clement George Fair von und zu Frankenstein. <laughs> Again, Clement George Fair von und zu Frankenstein. <laughs> he's been in quite a few movies too so i looked him up unfortunately he's no longer with you can't us put that on the title screen man. i don't know but it's hell to put that on the poster yeah. yeah so i was like all right clement uh, he is no longer with us so he's laying on a slab somewhere in a mad scientist office right now getting stitched back up and getting the bolts in his neck recharged all right moving on mr ben harley from 1966 went back and watched the reptile the Hammer reptile, movie, The okay. Reptile. Yeah. yeah so okay. uh, mostly of note for Michael Ripper being one of the main yeah. characters in a good time watching that. I'm only mentioning it because of Michael Ripper, more or less. So Michael Ripper. Yes. Um, now, if you ever go back and watch this movie, because I know we, we reviewed it. We did review it, yeah. Watch. Look at the similarities between The Wolfman okay. and this movie, because it's almost the same movie. With yeah. a with yeah. a sleeker designed monster and stuff. So, But I'm just saying it's, it's not as good as The Wolfman. Uh, Michael Ripper really helps bring it up, and the photography is pretty good. But I'm yeah. just saying, next time you watch it, think about that for a little while. Okay. All right. So next up, Mr. Ben Harley. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I'm just going to mention this. From 1993, you're not going to believe this one, but I'm going to tell you what I watched. Demolition Man. Oh, wow. <laughs> Well, Sly Stallone, Wesley Snipes, and Sandra yeah. Bullock. Yeah, Sandra Bullock. Yeah. It's a fun movie because... Yeah, it's pretty fun. It's a stupid movie. And I think when it came out, everybody really wanted to be seriously entertained. It's not that kind of movie. It's goofy. But it is yeah. pretty interesting to see how they 
view the future, the future, yeah. which we're living in right now, basically. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. We're so. supposed to be into jingles by now, right, Timo? Right. Yeah, right. we're into jingles. Yeah, Taco yeah. Bell rules the world. I mean, honestly, some of the stuff I watch, if you go back and watch it, you're like, okay, well, they're carrying on iPads. Okay, well, yeah. they got self-driving cars. So, you know, and yeah, everybody's so, a PC yeah. ninny. Oh uh, God, yeah, awful, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's pretty damn close. It's pretty damn close to where we've headed, at least. So uh, yes, interesting, yeah. though. Interesting. And I like it, the PC Ninny. I like that. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Last up, Mr. Ben Harley from 1942. Yeah. That's one of my favorite years. Oh, That's yeah, my, you're back yeah. in your comfort zone. Yeah. That's right. So we watched, and me and you reviewed this as well. But we went back and watched the Undying Monster. Oh, okay. So we went. We did review that one. Um, this one was kind of like a Wolfman and Hound of the Baskervilles mishmash. Yeah. yeah. In yeah. that, it's a Hound of the Baskerville story that really doesn't cheat. Yeah. So there's actually something going on. The Hound of the Baskervilles is a big pissed off dog and somebody's you know trying to do something. It's like, eh, it's not a monster. <laughs> yeah. But this is like a nifty little flick. I mean, they, they do have a creature in it. They don't show it, which is probably a good thing. Because you basically like... I don't know, a guy whose beard went out of control and kind of just went <laughs> up the side of his like temples. That's kind of what you got, but it's still a monster nonetheless. A little unibrow. A little, a little unibrow, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's yeah, he's a little bit of an, well, not even an eyebrow monster, too much hair to even notice him. But so it was, it's fun and it's not really a classic per se, though. It's, it's all right. It's I, you know, but it's not. It's I. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. We have reviewed it again and it's, it's a little bit more like a, a long Twilight Zone or Outer Limits episode. Episode. Uh, yeah. But the movie okay. itself is only like an hour long. So it's, it doesn't outstay its welcome too much. So had a little fun. It's been a, it was an interesting, an interesting week. Oh, I did, I did get a yeah. Russ Meyer movie in. Oh, did you? Yeah, okay. Vixen. <laughs> Forgot about that one. So. Yeah, <laughs> I no. watched it in front of Angie. She knew I was watching it, so I was good. I didn't. <laughs> say, didn't think. I like Russ hey, Meyer's no. movies, though. Oh yeah, they're uh, well, they're yeah, very they're I, yeah, they sure are. But they're fun and they're funny, and they oh, actually, they are, yeah. yeah, and they actually have like the story. You're sitting there like, I can't believe this is happening. And then you think about the soap opera life that all of us have lived at one time or another, or constantly. Yeah. And you think, yeah. well, it's not that's not that far out of reality. What's going on? <laughs> the women are a little far out of reality sometimes. No. They're yeah. very And I'm not hurting for any jiggle. I, I, you know, I'm just no, saying. Uh-uh. Yeah. <laughs> just saying it's, they're fun to watch. So but I did have a good yes, time. Oh. So, yeah. Uh, uh, what, what you got, Mr. Ben Harley? Did you watch any jiggle? Did you watch any Russ Meyer? No, I you know, no, not really. I wish I would have. No, you didn't um, watch any Clement von Frankenstein movies? <laughs> no, no. Uh, Damn. I, I was you know, I've been waiting. Von been und zu Frankenstein? No. <laughs> yeah. I've been saving it up, buddy. Okay. Oh, uh-uh. Guy's got but... pork rinds in his pockets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, there are a few things, Timo, that I, I, I did catch the other right. day. Um, I got I kind of got hooked on, on Prime Video. Uh, they have a little series of, uh, they're about 50 minutes long, but they're called like Discovering. Uh, and it, these are like, about actors and actresses, so I did. Watch oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I watched the Peter yeah, like Sellers one and a couple other yeah. ones. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, yep, yep they're okay. Yeah, I watched, yeah. yeah, they're not too bad. I watched the Lee Marvin. Yes, uh, I watched one, that one too. Yep, pretty good. They mm-hmm. had a good Chuck Chuck Bronson one. Mm-hmm. They had a good Chuck mm-hmm. Bronson. Uh, Robert Shaw. Mm-hmm. Watched Robert Shaw one, and uh, also watched my man uh, Richard Harris. Oh, there Richard you go. Richard Harris one, mm-hmm. which I was very excited about. But I do believe I I did watch some Walter Matthau and a. Paul Newman. Yeah. Okay. So right. very good though. Um, each one, yeah, actually they're about 50 minutes long, but I did learn a lot mm-hmm. that I didn't know. One thing though, that I did know going in <laughs> a lot of these is as I Ben, don't get too excited about seeing Orca. Right. Or slap shot. No, or they're a little topical. Death, yeah. 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 Or death hunt. Right. Or, uh, anything quite like yeah, that. Yeah. They're, they're, they're kind of topical. They're a little top. Yeah. 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 They, then they, not real in depth, not real in depth no. of the personal lives, more of an overview kind of thing. Yeah. It's still interesting. Yeah. Though. Yeah. Yeah. In, and some of the personal life stuff was like the early on right. in their life, which I, that's the stuff that, that fascinates me a little bit more than once they became famous, mm-hmm. I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I, I, I do enjoy seeing where these guys came from. Cause you know, like, uh, Paul Newman, Grew up probably, 
less than two hours here from me. He grew oh. up in Shaker Heights, which is right outside of Cleveland. Okay. Okay. You know, which is, I mean, we played a lot of hockey in Shaker, you know, and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So, um, and then also, uh, Charles Bronson grew up in Pennsylvania. Right, right. Uh, real close to like Johnstown and stuff, which is not far. He worked in a coal either. mine, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, so just, you know, things, I, that stuff interests me too. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. And and seeing those things. But uh, I was interested also to see Richard Harris's uh, beginnings. I don't know a lot about that, a little. But um, a lot of these, you know, uh, guys and actors and actresses I didn't know a lot about mm-hmm. um, you know their upbringings and stuff like that so that interests me a lot mm-hmm. you know but uh, they did mention Jaws during Robert Shaw's <laughs> I'm thing, sure they so did figured, yeah you know Jaws <laughs> yeah. came up that one was gonna come uh, up yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but I was disappointed in the Paul Newman one because I knew Slapshot wasn't gonna be shown I, I just knew it but I was hoping because uh, it <laughs> It's, it's a, a bigger movie. Iconic. I wouldn't. I it, wouldn't yeah. be surprised if. I mean, yeah. Slapshot is probably one of his longest lasting. I bet yeah. more people watch Slapshot today than will watch. Yeah, the, I don't know any sting. of his other. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And yeah. I like yeah. the Sting. It's yeah. a okay right. movie. It's, it's okay. actually a good movie. It's just long. It's yeah. just long, you know. Yeah. And Robert Shaw is great in that movie too. You know. Mm-hmm. And what was funny? I did. I did enjoy when they were talking with Robert Shaw. They did talk about the Sting. Uh, then the one guy had said. That Robert Shaw had come out and said in that movie, he's like, he wasn't worried about Robert Redford. He said, I can out, I can outact Robert Redford. Mm-hmm. He's like, but he he was worried about uh, Paul Newman uh-huh. working with Paul Newman because how good you know Newman was, and and he said, I can't outact him. I can't. Uh-huh. He's like, I can't. He's like, I can't outact Newman. He's uh-huh. like, uh, Red- Redford. I have no problem. He's like, but <laughs> he's a one trick pony. He's like a, yeah, yeah, he's yeah, kind it, of like a Kevin Costner yeah. type. You know, you, what you see, yeah. what you get. Yeah. Which is fine. Right. And, yeah. and, and Newman's just something that guy's, you know, that, and, and going back and seeing some of that stuff of him too, like in HUD and some of his early stuff, man, he was him, him and Lee Marvin, both like well, all those guys for the most part, mm-hmm. just command the screen. Mm-hmm. Fuck Walt, Walter Matthau too. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed watching that one. As well, you yeah. Know, there's just, a movie that he did called Charlie Varick that not a lot of people have yeah. seen. It's just coming yeah. out on Blu-ray in the next couple of months, actually. And uh, people yeah. should go back and watch that one too. That's a good one. Yeah, they they talk a lot about uh, um, uh, Pelham One Two. What's the, oh, the one? With, the taking of Pelham One Two Three. Yeah, that's a great was, movie too. Yeah, well, the original one. Because, the original. Yeah, one. Robert yeah. Robert Shaw's in that one. Yeah. too. You know, mm-hmm. and they talk about that during Robert Shaw's one, but then they also talk about it. Uh, during Walter Matthaus, and they were even saying how that was one of the first uh, normal guys in a situation like that. Mm-hmm. I've only mm-hmm. seen that once, I think, when I it's, was younger. Yeah, it's kind of like a hostage. It turns into like yeah. a like it turns into a a, yeah. a, 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 a heist He's movie a yeah. little yeah. bit. Yeah. It's it's a little bit. It's got a little bit of everything, but it's very interesting. Yeah. And yeah, it is yeah. realistic characters for the most part. Yeah. yeah, and they were saying how like that movie influenced like. Tarantino a lot, oh, yeah, also yeah, absolutely. The Killers yeah. with Lee Marvin, right, right, was also a big influence. And if you watch like that stuff too, it's like, yeah, now I see it. <laughs> Did you ever see the that. remake of that? I think it's Denzel Washington. No, of uh, the oh, Taking of Pelham, Pelham One Two Three. No, you know I haven't. But it's all right. I, it's it's um, not too bad. It's it? uh, yeah. I yeah. think it's Denzel Washington. I'm pretty sure it was a big movie. So, yeah. When it came out, yeah, and I yeah. watched it. it. was okay. I mean, for me, it's like, Dad, just, just stick with the original. But if you ever catch yeah. it on TV or something, you, you could do worse. I'll put it that way. Sure. Mm-hmm. Sure. So I did really enjoy these, but I would have liked to see, like, because they did then the Newman one, they jump right over Slapshot. And the yeah. thing is, is because the problem was, and I've known this for a while, uh, they had some issues during that filming. Uh, Johnstown did. They had another flood that was real bad. Uh, shortly after that, Newman lost his son uh, well, right around yeah. the same time that movie came out or while, you know, or was having mm-hmm. problems with the son while they were filming because the son died like 78. And I think Slapshot came out in 77. Mm-hmm. So it was it was uh, I think that's one of the reasons who he never really talked about that movie a lot because it was during a period of time in his life that wasn't a real good 
time, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So I can also understand that. But it was a Walter Hill movie for crying out loud, you know. Right. So it wasn't like it was. And, and Walter Hill movies were really good. Oh, oh yeah, making, absolutely. They were yeah. making good money. Oh know? yeah, yeah. And and slap shot, and, and it's funny because I do love it because I am a hockey guy. But that movie, if you're even if you're not a hockey person, it's a hell of a movie. It's mm -hmm. it's a very telling emotional yeah. movie that don't people don't understand if you watch it from start to finish you, you feel it, it's a lot more than just hockey and and outrageous fights and things like that there's a lot of stuff that and real true to life stuff in that film mm -hmm. and it was written by a woman mm -hmm. it was mm -hmm. written by a woman whose brother played mm -hmm. professional hockey well and, he, so, and even for walter yeah. hill it's a different type of story oh big time I mean, he big likes time. the like kind of um oh i don't know <laughs> the adventure with peril or yeah, or yeah. the adventure, yeah. you know, like uh, oh, I don't uh, the Southern Comfort type stuff. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, Last Man Standing. Yeah. I think he did. You know, a yeah. lot of things are yeah. uh, some more like a Kurosawa type thing, and this is not like that yeah. at all. So yeah, no. it's, 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 it's interesting. A different yeah. film. It's a good movie. It it's is. still yeah. just a good movie. But uh, so uh, you know, I had to suck it in on that, and then not see an orca. <laughs> Richard Harris right, right, an orca. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Figured that wasn't going to happen. Right. But, but you know what? Hey. They did say in these in, in the in the documentaries, and it's how I felt that uh, they did do Bad News Bears with okay. Mathow, which I don't. That's one of the greatest movies ever made. I don't care it's what anybody says. Yep. And um, I love the ending of that. The very ending oh, of that. Just, I love the ending of that. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. uh, it's just a telling, such a telling story of a yeah. guy who just refines himself too right, again. Right. You know. Yeah. And and uh, but uh, you know it it, it, it <laughs> it's neat. To see those things, but it, like they said in these, mm -hmm. and it made me feel good that a lot of those films that they did later in their careers might not have been the best ones, mm -hmm. but some of them were, but also that they opened them up to a whole new generation, and that's us, mm -hmm. buddy. You know what I mean? Right. Guys like you and I. Right. Like the Bad News Bears, I mean, I knew who Walter Matthau was, but that movie really opened me up to him. Right. And, and then, uh, you know, and then other ones, Orca, opened me up to Richard Harris. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. These movies made me fans of these guys. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. So, well, uh, Hell, Wolfen so, made me an Albert, Albert Finney fan. There you go. See, you know, you know what I mean? So, yeah, what are the and, odds of that? And, you know, so. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. Bingo. Yeah. But yeah, I'm going to go back and find there's some really good ones, actors and some hubba hubba actresses. Too, yeah, yeah, yeah there is. Yeah. A lot of Turner and, you know, a couple of others. Right, maybe. Right. <laughs> and they're not bad. Like I said, they are a little no, topical. I mean, they're not, yeah. you're not going to go in like this real in-depth no. biography about, type of thing. But there's they're, like four yeah. people that sit and talk about like their yes. like biographers that talk about it. It's, it's like a lot uh, of the music. Historians. Yeah. It's like yeah. a lot of the music documentaries and they're talking about like, yes. like say a band's albums. So they have like three yeah. people who have about as much right as me or you do. Yeah. So exactly. they're talking about this stuff, but it's still interesting to hear what other people think about these yeah. movies that mm -hmm. you like uh, and actors yeah. and actresses that you like. So that's what makes them interesting. It's not that you don't know about them. What do other people think about them? You right. know, and it's pretty interesting, exactly. and, you, and you can't argue with the movie. Why? Well, I've tried. I've tried two times. So <laughs> it doesn't work. Yeah. It doesn't work. No, the keeps they, they, the fucking movies ignore yeah. me. They ignore me. Yeah, I keep counting them in jaws. Don't go in the water. <laughs> Don't go in the water. But they don't listen yeah. every time. Right. Punch yeah. him in the jaw. It's rubber. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What else you got? Uh, you know what, Tim? Oh, well, real quick. Um, okay. I want to get into too in depth in it, but I did try to start watching uh, Stranger Things. Oh uh, yeah, okay. Um, mm -hmm. I got two episodes in, and eh, mm -hmm. eh, eh, you're. Eh, I think I went through like I four or five, and I was out. I was done. Yeah. I just don't really see the. I don't see it. No. What? So, but we'll see. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna go through until. But I, it was just when I watched the first episode, I was like, uh, I liked like the first half, and then it was like, uh, it's okay. And then I didn't really care about seeing the next episode. Mm -hmm. It didn't suck me in. And then I put it on while I was making dinner and had it in the background and uh, finished the other half while right. I was eating. And it just it didn't really – I just didn't really – I don't know. What year is that supposed to take place in again? Like 84? Is it 84? Yeah, something like 80, 45, something like that. Yeah, yeah and, and I don't – sure. I don't, I'm, yeah, it's, it's, the, the good thing is, and I don't know if you notice this, they don't really beat you over the head too right. hard with and the year. Good. It just is what yeah. it is. And I appreciated that. But then I didn't really get anything out of the kids. People were having like their, their favorite kids in the show. And so I think, I don't, I don't, really, the, yeah. It could be that some people just enjoy being spoon fed. Things. I think so. And I don't. 
And so I think they also make these things happen like this, like these uh, uh, phenomenons. Oh, you mean they 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 uh, they they razz things Generate, up? They, yes. Yeah, they kind of give a lot. I do. Of, I yeah. really do because I don't see it so far. I just mm-hmm. don't. Mm-hmm. I, I we'll we'll see. I'll, I'll keep going. I'll keep going and see what I get out of it. But I don't feel. Like this is anything that's wowing, like is setting any mark or benchmark or any type. I, I, I didn't get it at all. I didn't understand what the what the interest in it was. But I, I have a Mm-mm. funny again. I think people like things being spoon fed to them. Yeah, I think I they too. live on Netflix, and yeah. I, I don't really think that's a good thing. I don't even live on Amazon Prime. No, I live in my uh-uh. collection of films that I have, and I choose to pick and choose what I want to watch, but. I don't know. I, I just didn't get it. But again, I think what you're seeing is what I don't like about television series. Is, you know, I yeah. say that and I'm telling you every night I'm watching Barney Miller. Why is that? <laughs> well, why is that? Because television. every yeah. week is a completely different story with different characters. You can jump yep. in and out at any time. I can watch an episode with fish and then I can watch an episode without fish. And yeah. it's still yeah. going to be Barney Miller. And there's and the story evolves mostly around the people coming in. To the precinct. Yes. And yeah. so it was enjoyable. Night Court. Night Court was like yeah. that. Night Court had the people coming in and they, you know, every week was different. Cheers. You had people coming in the bar. And they did yeah. have a, a story arc to them between the relationships between the people. But who cares? It doesn't like you can't just jump in. You can't jump into episode four um, of Stranger, Stranger Things, Things and no, understand what the hell's like, going on or being entertained. No. Mm-mm. And that's what I don't like about them. But I don't know. Guys upset because there's a character I like. His name is Benny. Mm. And he got killed in the first episode, mm. so I was like, you know, I, I, I was like, I there's the character that I liked. You right. guys killed him already, so I'm out. I'm like, no. yeah, <laughs> we'll yeah. yeah, we'll see. Like I said, I'm not. I don't know. I'm not even really like Angio and Chance started watching together after me and after I tapped yeah. out, and I don't think they're even watching it anymore. And I I've yeah. got the series as for them. I got them for oh, them really? to watch, not me them. I. Well, yeah. yeah, they like to watch stuff too that I don't like to watch, so I'll get them stuff just like I get anyone else anything, and it's just not it's not firing. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not making fun of people for liking it. I just don't understand why they do. I've never really heard anything except for it's available and it's set in the '80s. Yeah. Well, I I, I watch a movie called Poltergeist. It's set in the '80s too. <laughs> yeah, and it's and it's kind of legit, and you can watch yeah. that. And it's the same thing, but you know, I don't know. It's been really hard. Not my world anymore. Where the fuck's my cane at? Where's my cane? Yeah. At? Way <laughs> I'll, I'll, yeah. Wave my, I'll wave my notebook around. That's something. Those are beating on things. That's all you yeah. got? That's all I got. Woo! Not a good, yeah. not a good viewing. <laughs> not the no. Oh but now the documentaries were good. I appreciate. Yeah, those, they were really good. Yeah. You're you're good, yeah. you're just why not just jump in a <clears throat> thing of quicksand while you're at it? Why, <laughs> yeah. why, you, why do they call quicksand quick when it's slow? Yeah. Slow sand. I don't know. Slow yeah. sand. Why is it a pair of yeah. pants? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I'm trailing off. Let's get to our official little film, Mr. Ben <laughs> Harley. Let's get to our official film from 1957. Yes, we sir. have the classic film. I was a teenage Harley. <laughs> That's right. Oh, oh I was a <laughs> teenage werewolf. Werewolf. Yeah. yeah. Let me get yeah, out. Uh, mean, let me get a movie I'm guy. Teenage jackass, jerk <laughs> yeah, off, man. A little bit, yeah. Let me get out movie guy is, here and give yeah. you a real short storyline synopsis for us. A teenage right. werewolf. <laughs> a hypnotherapist uses a temperamental teenager as a guinea pig for a serum, which transforms him into a vicious werewolf. Yep. I love yeah. the reasoning. Now, first of all, let me talk about a guy here. Now, now this is famous for mostly Michael Landon. Yes. Uh, actually, he beat out Jack Nicholson. Oh, for the role, believe it or not. Yeah. I just saw Jack Nicholson and Little Shop of Horrors yesterday. They're listening to us, Mr. Ben Harley. They're listening. I'm telling you. Yeah. So, but here's the thing. Whit Bissell. Whit, but I'm a Whit Bissell guy, okay? <laughs> Whit Bissell plays Dr. Alfred Brandon. He's a serum doctor. He's the guy. Yeah. He's a guy. Yeah. He's Doctor. He's Doctor Thompson and Creature from the Black Lagoon. Also, <coughs> oh, okay. By the yeah. way, so yeah. I like me Whit Bissell. You'll see him in just about every Western made. Almost, yeah. yeah he's yeah. kind of a less famous Carradine, I guess. Uh, <laughs> like him a lot, but he has this really solid, solid plan to start giving a teenager uh, <laughs> serums yeah. in order to revert humanity back to caveman days to save us. Which is a really, really strong plan 
for people who don't make good plans, I guess. I don't really know. I don't know how he got his degree. He must have been. He's one of those book smart guys, Mr. Ben. Yeah, really. yeah, yeah. He's so, got book smart. But what was interesting about it is that as we were watching this, it sort of dawned on me that, you know, when I was talking to Angio. I said, what, what I like about watching the movies from like the early 80s and watching the 50s movies, and why some of the ones in between I'm not as into as much, I said, because the guys that were making the movies – in the early eighties, like Carpenter and, 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 um, Spielberg. <laughs> yeah. Spielberg, um, John Landis. Yeah. Uh, you know, these guys, they were Dante. influenced Joe by, Dante. yeah, Joe Dante. They were influenced by these movies from the fifties. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, so, and you know, I told Angie, I said, what's amazing to me is I, as I was watching the movie, I started seeing more and more similarities to of all movies, altered states. Oh, no, she's looking really? at me like, are you just what? Give me that. That's not weed. You know, I mean, she's just like, she's, just, <laughs> yeah. she's like, there's no way. Yeah. But when you think about it, it's like, no, I mean, he got into a tank and he reverted himself back yeah, to caveman or whatever days. And he thought that this was going to help humanity somehow. I don't understand why. I don't know why these people think, but I'm yeah. telling you, it was a little bit like altered states and a black and white kind of fifties driving kind of like, <laughs> right. you know, sure. little less brainy. Let's put it that way. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But I just thought, I mean, just go. It was almost like an Italian movie. It's like, Oh, I just go with it. Let's go with it. Let's go with it. But anyway, so it's a horrible reasoning, but uh, this was not Michael Landon's, like his first role or anything. I think this is his first important, you know, f- definitely on screen yeah. and film, you know, role or whatever. Before um, he was little Joe. Right, right. And, um, are- <laughs> now, it's interesting, too, is I think it's because of him and his family. This movie is pretty much unavailable. It is a DVD Bob special. Uh, and it's weird. amazing to me that this won't come out. But here's the problem. I've heard this a lot, that it's Michael Landon and his family doesn't want this movie out. Well, if that's the case, then why isn't I Was a Teenage Frankenstein also not available? Because it right. was made almost back to back. It's basically a sequel. It doesn't have Michael Landon in it. Right. So I don't know what's right. going on there, but these movies need to come out. Anyway, so it's been a little while since I've seen this. Uh, but I was really, I've been jonesing to watch it for a while. I've been talking about it. Now, when's the last... You've seen this before. I know you've seen this, yes. right? Okay, yeah. when's the last time you've yeah. seen it? Oh, uh, dude, 20-some hmm. years ago, mm-hmm. maybe. Mm-hmm. It's been a while. I mean, I would see bits and pieces of it here and there, but I since I've sat and watched it, yeah, right. 20, at least right. probably um, 30 years. <laughs> I, always think this, I always think this is yeah. one of the better... Uh, as far as tension goes and suspenseful yeah. moments and stuff, I always thought this was a pretty successful little genre movie. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's definitely um, Michael Landon's a jackass in it. Yeah, like, he oh, is absolutely. just a mm-hmm. jerk, man. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, he's a little over the te- top. A little over the oh, top. It's yeah, teenage angst on steroids, right. man. Like, he's just wants to fight everybody, and it starts right off with a fight, like mm-hmm. right off the bat. And I, he picks up a shovel and swinging a shovel at a guy. Like, I mean, it's intense. Right. You're right. And then. Right. Um, and that's a big he's dude. I don't dead. think he should have been messing with that dude. No, he was a big no, guy. That dude just, <laughs> he just keeps putting it to him. And then even like after it happens, like they, you know, they try to calm him down. And even the guy that he was fighting, the big guy was like trying to be like, that's all right. You know, right, no, right, right. Still. Right. So it, that whole scene basically sets it up for how, like, you know, that that uh he's already like Michael Ann's already just a high strung jackass. Right. He really is. He's got like, anger I, issues. Yeah. I did not like him in this movie, man. And I kept thinking maybe that's why they don't want it out there like that. But still, whatever. You know, like, I watch a lot of Bonanza, Timo, right, and right, I have right. watched a lot of right. Bonanza. And, and Little Joe's been shot numerous times, you know, or Michael Landon's character, Little Joe. And he's always fighting. He's always got a girl. He's always doing something silly or dumb. Right. You know, and Bonanza's out there. So I don't understand why they wouldn't maybe want this, but who knows it, uh, whatever. But uh, I I think you're right on this because this movie's really tense as far as um, mostly because Michael Landon, him, you never know when he's just going to snap. Right. And there's, a you know, like he has a girlfriend who's really trying to help him out. But like there's even scenes before he's the werewolf where he goes to meet, you know, the parents mm-hmm. and you're like, oh man, is he going to snap? Right here, is he going to be rumbling the dad? Like this is pretty intense for this time period. Right, like uh, I would even think of like picking up a girl nowadays and their parents or whatever. Like, well, 
I'm so old, Tim. I'll be picking them up at her grandparents or her granddaughter's house. Um, I would never think saying something so mean to her granddaughter when right. I picked them up. Right, right. right. <laughs> you know. But anyways, yeah, like, I, you know what I'm saying? I just don't. Like, so, they, I mean, scenes like that were, were pretty tense just from even without the werewolf. You know right, what I mean? Like, right. and then there's a, a, a particular scene where he had, they're at a, like their little clubhouse mm-hmm, or mm-hmm. wherever. That's a and, swinging uh, place, baby. Yeah. Daddy, oh, that's yeah. a swinging was, place. Let me tell you, I think <laughs> oh, I saw a couple time. of sodium, sodium bottles popped open in that sucker. <laughs> <laughs> with some straws. The yeah, straws I saw some straws, I yeah. saw some skirts floating up when they were twirling and <laughs> yeah. dancing, I'm telling you. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, there's a scene where he pummels on this guy, uh one of his buddies like, you know, blows like a, a horn in his ear and he snaps, starts pummeling him and his girlfriend tries to stop and he shoves her down and Right. And it's a tense scene. It really is. Especially you have to put yourself in that time period mm-hmm. too. You know what I mean? Like and uh from that point on, yeah, when he goes to see your buddy, uh, Will Whip It, what was his name? <laughs> Whit Bissell. <laughs> Whit Bissell, yeah. Will Whip It, yeah. Whit Bissell, yeah. Whit Bissell, yeah. I don't know if he's from the famous uh, uh, vacuum cleaner family or not. I'm not sure, but yeah. It's a Bissell broom. Yeah. yeah. He's a Whit Bissell, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I guess it's better than a wet bristle, so. <laughs> I guess so, yeah. Yeah, well, it's, uh, but, it's, yeah, so he's, yeah. but it, you're right though. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of drama. I think Michael Landon, yeah. you know, if you ask me, I think it's cause he overplays it a little bit. I think he might just be yeah. embarrassed by his performance, which isn't bad. It's yeah. just over the top. No. I mean, I mean, and, this is a drive in movie after all. Yeah. He had like an hour and 15 minutes to get the point across. Sometimes you can't have a lot of nuance. You just got to jump in and do it. But yeah. you know, you're watching a movie called I was a teenage werewolf and that's what I think is interesting about it. Cause it's like, that's not that bad. I mean, it's really is for yeah. a, for a black and white horror film from the fifties. I mean, it's yeah. really like, cause sometimes those were, those could be a little milk toast. Now we review a lot of them and some of them are sure. fun and good and stuff. This one's a little rougher. It's a little darker. Um, you know, to be honest with you, yeah. I've seen a lot worse, a lot worse werewolf makeup. And I'm, I'm, Putting this out there, I think it's better than the I think it's better than the Lon Chaney Wolfman look. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I, I never thought the yeah. Wolfman, the Chaney, Chaney Wolfman look was very like frightening at all. It no. Kind of just I don't know what every what it looks like to me. It looks ugh. looks weird. It's it does odd. look weird. Yeah. And this one looked a little more now there's a famous he is wearing the same clothes, so he has like a teenager jacket on. <laughs> like a like a, a rubble about a cause type jacket. Um, yeah, yeah, it's tough. But there's a couple moments that where gets like them in trouble. It does. It does. But I thought people kind of figure out who yeah. is. But let's give yeah. the movie a little credit. Let's give the movie yeah. a little credit because we didn't have a Superman Clark Kent moment. No, you know it uh-huh. wasn't like people like my God that creature stole his clothes and his yeah. own ramp. No, no they, were, they figured they out right immediately. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they figured out. And immediately. I like that. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank mm-hmm. you, buddy. Yeah. yeah. For mentioning yeah. That. So that was like, that was kind of a good thing too. So you kind of cut that fat out that you really don't yeah. need because really it's like, thank you for having some intelligence. You know, sure. Here. Exactly. And, and, and he doesn't, and exactly. even the, even the arc, the story arc for him yeah. going to Whit Bissell is he doesn't want to yes. go see a shrink because Whit Bissell is uh, a head shrinker. Well, he's <laughs> head shrinker. That's yeah. what he kept saying, a head shrinker. Right. Right. And the thing <laughs> yeah. is, is they, they, uh, they keep, telling him like the, the people around him, like you should go see Dr. So-and-so he can really help you. you should go yeah. see. And then I think after he shoves his girlfriend down is when he finally decides I better go see this he guy. Figures, I got problems. He has to. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I do have issues. Yeah. Right. Which is, and that also, that was a very poignant moment mm-hmm. in the film. Where he's like, that's it. I, I have to. Right. You know, cause he was making fun of it and yeah, call him the head shrinker and all that. But at that point, he came to the realization, as did his friends. <laughs> right, right. You got a problem. You right. need to go to that. So. Right. Yeah. Well, then there's the uh, the other interesting thing about this movie that kind of breaks away from normality from these kinds of movies is the <sighs> Whip Bissell's assistant, you would think would be a yeah. snarling ogre, like a, 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 a an Igor type character, a Fritz yeah. type character. But he's no, actually he's... a very sympathetic and very empathetic <laughs> doctor on his own, I think. But it's almost yeah. like there's one moment. Where does he do? He calls him. Uh, he goes, you know, uh, please, Doctor Wagner, could you go, you know, do this? And he's like, absolutely, yeah. Doctor, I'll go do that. And like the next scene, you hear him go, Hugo, get to my trousers. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. he tries to kind of float in and out for a minute, but it, yeah. it, it doesn't really do much. But and that guy reminded me of like uh, uh, 
Joe Besser or something. The guy mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. was playing his part. He was like that. He's real. Oh, hi. Yeah. You know, he had that, that, that tone of voice and the look and the. Right. Uh, but, yeah. He, you know, he didn't want to have to do it, you know. And he was trying to be a, a, the voice of, 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 of conscience. Of reason. Yeah. yeah he was trying yeah, to be. Yeah. And I found that pretty interesting, too. Yeah. Um, me, too. Yeah. The detective, the detective Donovan, who was uh, throughout the movie trying yeah. to, yeah, he's a, actually he's the guy I think that suggested first the Michael Landon should go see uh, the doctor. I believe it was him yes. first who did that. Yeah, now, I think he's the one that broke up the fight. Uh, yes, the original fight. Yeah, right. And that's yeah. Barney Phillips. He's in a great episode of The Twilight Zone where in a uh, uh, a spaceship crashes like up in the mountains, okay. and then the whole thing takes place in a diner, and they can't figure out who the Martian is. Oh wow! So everybody's that's, in there and trying to figure yeah. out. Okay, we know something crashed. We know a Martian escaped. Which one of us is it? Kind of like the thing, huh? A little bit. It is actually a little bit like that's the thing. Nice. Yeah. So he's in a great episode of that. I always remember him from that. Um, now, did you notice um, the other the policeman? The other policeman in the film, Timo. Uh, did you notice who that was? Robert Griffin, the police nope. chief. No. Okay. No. The t- fill me in. What we got? What did I miss? Old Guy Williams himself. Okay. Was in that now? Guy Williams is uh, my uh, space father, not God, but my <laughs> <laughs> as in my fa- Swiss family Robinson. Oh, space family I got gotcha. you. I see now. I yep, yeah, yep, yep, I got oh, you. Oh, Guy yep. Williams from Lost, Lost in Space. space. And, okay, yeah. and Zorro fame. <laughs> All right, you yeah, got he it. was the one policeman. Yeah, uh, he actually him and the one detective shot uh, at the end, or oh, I gave away the end. Oh, oh boy! Man. Oh boy! Yeah. Darn it. Oh, they were God. shooting at they were shooting at the yeah. werewolf or Santa. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, they, that was old guy Williams. And so that must have been one of his first because it was funny because I saw his name at the beginning. I'm like, oh, I can't wait to pick him out. And yeah, he uh, he had a pretty decent part in it too. He was in it for like the last half. He was in a lot of the film. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. And uh yeah, so I like that. Yeah, it was that was cool for me too. So yeah, good eye on that one. That was, yeah, that was that a good was. eye. Good eye. Yeah. And that's a, that, that was another thing too. This movie doesn't really fall into the classic werewolf tropes. It's no, no, uh-uh. it's not no, not, not about moon. the moon. It's not about silver bullets. It's not nope. about nothing like that. And that. there is a, but you know, Tim, a real fast. So they did have to throw in the old creepy janitor guy who has to tell us that he's from the old country <laughs> and that about werewolves. That was the only thing though, Tim, that was it. That was the only real, you know, werewolf trope. You mean, really. you mean uh, Vladimir Sokolov yes. as Pepe yeah. the janitor? Pepe the janitor. You yeah. got an old scary movie called Pepe. Keep your eye on Pepe. Yeah. If you're ever yeah. called Pepe, you keep your eye on Pepe. I yeah, oh, Guy Williams, yeah, he was not buying into that at all. No, he was no. not buying into the werewolf. No. <laughs> Did you not? Now, here's the thing that I actually caught. Okay. Yeah. Since you got me, I'm going to catch you. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. not uh, now, this is another one of these. They're watching us, Mr. Ben Harley. They're watching yeah, us. Okay. I believe, yeah. So, the kid at the party who gets slapped. Did you recognize him? Oh, no. James Best. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. (laughs) Two James Best. Now, this is getting weird. (laughs) This is getting weird. (laughs) I'm telling you, it's getting getting Uh, weird because if you remember what I said about the the Mystery Science Theater, there was a Michael Landon comment. Uh, yes. it, it goes on and on. And then I was watching the Killer Shrews, who stars Killer Shrews. James Best. James Best. That's yes, right. Yeah. That's coo, right. Coo, so coo. very interesting <laughs> uh, little mishmash here, hodgepodge of stuff. And um, I, you know, this is a fun movie. There's yeah. not, I mean, yeah. as far as werewolf movies go, it's a pretty good one. And I even like, I think I wish they would have done this more, but I do like they even have like a bunch of drool and stuff falling off the teeth. I was kind of wondering yeah. if that was real. Because those teeth couldn't <laughs> yeah. have been comfortable. <laughs> no, no. Uh-uh. Comfortable. I'll be just yeah. with the mouth a little bit. And then yeah. there's the classic scene that is good on many levels. And that's the scene with the, the female gymnast. Oh, yeah. That's on the, what, the parallel deep, bars yeah. or something yeah. she was on. And first of all, she's she's not the most difficult thing in the movie to look at. No. That's uh-uh. for sure. Uh, she's a little leggy. Little leggy, you might want to say. <laughs> but that's always been a great scene. It's oh, always yeah. been a great Big scene. Time. It's a good menacing scene. It's a good suspenseful scene. Um, and it doesn't hold up quite as well this time because I haven't seen this long time either. And it doesn't hold no, up the whole, quite as well, whole, but it's still good. Yeah. The whole upside down when she's look, she's on the parallel bars yeah, and she's yeah. like, and then she's 
bends back and looks up, you know, and sees him, mm-hmm. and he's upside down coming at her. That was that was really cool. Yeah, yeah. that was a cool little part. Tell like, you what, uh, if she lays like that, I might be coming toward her in a gym too, like yeah, that, and then yeah. I'd be in jail. See? But I kept thinking, I'm like, so is the principal? Is she the is she the gymnast coach too? Because at one point she was, and then I'm thinking to myself, man, things have changed because the girl's like, no, I'm going to stay and practice a little longer. Right. Ain't nobody leaving a kid in the gymnasium anymore. You can't even leave a kid in a room by himself anymore, much less. You know what I'm saying? I think. Right. All the silly things that I think of anymore. Yeah. PC. Right. But well, she must Demolition have been a man. she yeah. must have been a gymnast a long time ago, according to what yeah. I was seeing on the yeah on uh-huh. the movie there. But look, it, it's yeah. a fun. It's still a fun movie though. I mean, I think yes. that as far yeah. as these movies go, it, it holds up pretty well. Um, some of the other movies have a little bit more fun stuff in between. I think the yeah, I think some of the Whip Bissell stuff gets a little long when it's like, nah, I can make something else up. That's goofy. That's sure. kind of yeah. silly. Yeah. And they do kind of push the Michael Landon problem a little hard. But you know what? They were trying to make a movie that I, kids would identify with. Yeah. You know, back then. Yeah. And, and they were, this was about what they could do at that time. And, and it's funny, too, because, yeah, Whip Bissell's character, he found a kid who was a troubled youth. So if anything was to happen, they could just blame it on him being a troubled youth. Right. You right. know, and that was a cool little part of it, too. You right. Know? Right. Because there so, was that big delinquency yeah. thing going on. Oh, in the, Still, yeah, in the, I think that's when the marijuana was coming up. <laughs> I think it was too. It's all the <laughs> devil's weeds fault because we all know that weed makes people act like Michael Landon in that movie, right? You go crazy. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah you, it makes them like they're up yeah. for days. Yeah, you know, yep, yep. I mean, they're just they're they're tweaking out real bad. They're fighting yeah. people and stuff because they're stoned. You yeah, know? Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. You're supposed so. to get mellow, man. <laughs> yeah, right, right. But I'm gonna great ape up the movie. I, I, it's, it's yeah, still fun. Too, it holds it up. Is. It holds up well. Uh, it is a DVD Bob special. If you need, if you, uh, you ain't gonna find this. I think you no. can find it on YouTube. Yes, uh, that's where, that's where you found it. it? Okay, because yep. yep. I got a yeah. disc of it, but it's a, it's a hot disc. <laughs> it's a yeah. DVD Bob yeah, special, as we call them. But um, yeah. But it's Don't fun. Let Michael Landon know you got it. Oh, I'm not. Uh, well, I'd be a, him down on you. <laughs> I was going to say that'd be a trick anyway, but he, yeah. he was an angel already in a television series. Yeah, well, here's the other That's thing, right. too, and this is what bothers me, too. So I've always heard this rumor that it's him and his family that pulled <clears throat> this movie out. Well, then why is it on Was a Highway to Heaven? He actually he reintroduced this werewolf character in the show. Yeah, it was like a Halloween did. episode or something yeah, to scare right. the kids. Yeah. So I don't get it. Like, and that's why I'm kind of wondering, is it really that or is something else? Might be some money involved. There might be. Yeah. I'm wondering, you know, so, but anyway, because you know, this one, Tim, you know, even people who aren't huge horror fans would like to have this in their collection Absolutely. because it's, you know, a lot of people know this movie because of it. Yeah. It's there's because a reason. I was a teenage werewolf. Yeah. I was a teenage. I know this way more than I was a teenage Frankenstein. Right. Right. It's, and, this is just much more in the consciousness. I've it's, I've heard it more. It's right. been around, you know. And, and Michael Landon is certainly the main yeah, reason Landon, for that. Yeah. I mean, he's exactly, the main yeah. reason because everybody always says, it's Michael Landon. Ha, ha, ha. It's like, well, yeah. it was yeah. 1950s. He was a kid, you know, just acting. Trying and, to make it into a mo- yeah, in the movies. And man. it certainly worked uh, And for how many of these people, Timo, do we know, and it happens so much, if you weren't in a Western, you were in a horror movie. Right, right. To make it. Right. And and it went all the way up until the 80s that yeah. you were in horror and not so much cowboy flicks. <laughs> right. But horror movies still, man, you know, and it still happens. Well, so. it frosts me because you get people, yeah. I mean, even if they don't want, if Michael Landon wanted to, to shed himself of this film, that always bothers me because it's like, you know, there are old, very prominent stars actors mm-hmm. academy award winners and things like that yes they want to do horror films now so that they can do conventions because yes. it's such a cash yep. cow for them now and yep. i'm looking at mm-hmm. you know how i get about that i'm looking at these people going oh i hate that shit and yeah. you got some celebrities we'll leave them nameless right now i've talked about about nausea you got some celebrities i don't even know why they're at the conventions they're right. bitching they're doing this or doing that i'm not signing my yep. horror stuff you know Michael Landon, yeah. though, I don't think his family or anybody. If that's the case, and again, I'm hedging on that, but if it is the case, there's no need for it. Let me tell you something. No. This is what they need to do. They should, This never even came out in DVD or anything. They need to release it. And then yep. if you're so worried about stuff, take the money and put it towards something good. Yes. Okay? Not a political thing. Put it towards something that's generally good that we all, yeah. the American Heart Association. Something 
uh, the Cancer Institute. Anything, yeah. and I'm not even a big fan Trouble of those you. people, but yeah, Trouble any, you. yes, yes, um, um, soup kitchens. I don't care. Do whatever it is that you feel like is good. Just put the money somewhere where it makes you feel okay. The yeah. movie is not going to go away. People are no, still going to want it. And they're going to be here for a long time. Yes. After we're all gone. And they're going to want it more and more the more you don't put it out. Take it from mm-hmm. a collector who knows. Yes. We want this shit yep. bad because it's unavailable. I don't really care about the second Star Wars prequel on Blu-ray. Why? It's not uh-uh. hard to find. No. Uh-uh. And it sucks. And this, <laughs> that's the other reason. This one, on the other hand... It's hard to find, so I want it bad, real bad. Yeah, so we got yeah. prophecy coming out in Blu-ray and the Obama's film in Himalayas. That's all I got to say. Sweet. Yeah, prophecy's oh, up on Prime. Did I tell you that? No, no, you didn't. Yes, uh, yes, it's up on Prime. Uh, I watched in the background. I was printing late one night, and yeah, uh, okay. still good. Yeah, still I know. Movie. I know. I'm waiting for my Blu-ray to come, so I'm going to put that up on a big screen. I got it. I've already pre-ordered it. It's ready to come. Wait. I'm ready to go. So, all right. I'm going to give Wait. it a great bape up, right. Mr. Ben Harley. Yeah, you said too, great bape up for uh, I was a teenage werewolf. Yeah, I was right. a teenage werewolf. That's right. So, I don't know what we're doing next week, Mr. Ben Harley, but it might involve teenagers. It'll be riveting. It will be riveting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to leave it right. with this. There was a very funny crack on Mystery Science Theater, and that, that reminded me yeah. of it. And there was, I don't remember which movie it was for, but there was a guy with a shirt off, and he had perfect nipples. Basically, and Crow said, "Are those his nipples or are those gene rivets?" <laughs> Until yeah. next week, ladies and gentlemen, stay spooky, and we'll talk yeah. to you then. Uh, keep it creepy, people. Keep it riveting. You've been listening to the Tim Owen Harley Show, brought to you by ScreenPrintingFactory.com, your affordable one-stop solution to all your screen printing needs. 